speed, drive, power, the things that make a champion. Punch in every fiber and muscle. Multiply that force 5,000 times, and you have an idea of the power within the engines of one liberator. Here's a liberator coming in for a landing. For 50 hours, those engines have been pulling 30 tons of airplanes. A physical checkup is due. The fever chart. If you think your physical was thorough, watch the going over this baby gets in the 50-hour inspection of its engines and propellers. But the patient is ready. And here are the engine specialists. Crew Chief Kelly and his consultant. Corporal Bender. Private Hammond. Sergeant Olson. And Sergeant Greaves. All right, boys, you're on. And remember, what you do here, or fail to do, can mean life or death for the men who fly this ship. Grebe leads off by checking the ring cowling for security of attachment. Then the cowl flap. Uh-oh, it's loose. Probably an eyeball, worn or broken. Well, Grebe isn't going to waste time brooding about it. He goes right to work and removes the bolt. Here's the troublemaker. The thread is stripped. And here's the replacement. As soon as the cowl flap is made tight, he's ready for the next step. The men check all clamps, bondings, tapings, and rods within the engine section of the nacelle. Hammond knows that a spark from an insecure bonding can cause a mid-air explosion. What about those tapings, Olson? All wires and thermocouple leads must be protected and securely mounted. See that all rods operate properly. This one must be secured in its clamp. Trained hands and eyes run over the engine mount, looking for cracks, particularly at the welded joint. The same careful inspection is given to the protective paint. Meanwhile, almost before you can name it, Bender lubricates the Scotter hand crank extension support bearing. Next, Hammond inspects the intake and exhaust manifolds for damage, for loose exhaust stacks and retaining lugs, for broken... Wait a minute, a bolt is missing. Looks as if someone forgot to safety it. Hammond's going to replace it and see that it stays this time. And there's only one way to make sure. That's right by proper safety. When that's done, he'll complete the check by looking for broken or loose studs and for blown gaskets. Nearby, Greed examines the expansion joint. No soot, no leak. And what about the springs? They should have enough resiliency and tension to keep the joint gas tight. On to the next inspection. The cylinder is checked for broken or damaged fins. This can be caused by internal failure of the cylinder by continual heating and cooling, or even by a rock thrown back by the propeller. They inspect the rocker box covers for oil leakage. Such a leak is usually due to a loose hold-down nut, a faulty gasket, or heat warpage of the covers. Take extreme care in tightening the rocker box stud. If you happen to wring the head off, you'll really have a time getting the stud out of the aluminum casting. They lubricate the cowl flap, making certain to oil all moving parts. As always, they use the lubricant specified in the latest check order. Nice catch, wasn't it? Well, this sort of thing is not for beginners. These men have been working together as a team for a long time. They're experts, and they're not playing, merely trying to save some valuable time. Now to the cockpit, where Crew Chief Kelly has installed himself. First, he makes certain that the free air temperature reading is the same as the cylinder head temperature and the oil temperature. Next, he checks operation of the mixture control. Automatic lean, automatic rich, full rich, and finally back to idle cutoff. 
He opens and closes the throttle to check for proper opening and closing of the butterfly. Okay, Kelly. Check. The friction control should apply the desired friction or lock the levers entirely. From controls to engines, they clean all cables with kerosene, especially around the pulleys and leads. Then the cables are coated with rust preventative. Turnbuckles, safeties, and cotter pins are checked throughout. With Olsen at the supercharger and Kelly at the controls, the supercharger regulator is checked for freedom of operation. The engine check is complete, and they commence their inspection of the propellers. First, Bender looks closely for nicks and fatigue cracks. Next, they check the dome nose plug, the dome retaining nut set screw, and the hub bolt. Kelly watches carefully as Olsen checks the prop governor for security of mounting, proper safetying, and oil leaking. While the others inspect the electric wiring of the propeller circuit, Kelly closes the prop governor switches, holding them for a few seconds to make sure that each telltale flashes on when the governor reaches its operating limit. With the props accounted for, Reed turns his attention to the anti-icer equipment. After making certain the fluid level is okay, he opens the pet cock. This allows the mixture of glycerin and alcohol to be pumped from the tank for the operational test. Go ahead, Kelly. Main line switch again. Then the anti-icer control. After two or three minutes, the fluid comes out through the pores of the slinger ring. Olsen signals an OK to Kelly, who immediately turns off the main line and anti-icer motor switches. Nice going, men. That's one engine ready for another 50 hours. Three more to go. When all four have been inspected, Kelly puts his official stamp of approval in the appropriate columns of Form 41B. Ready, flight crew? The engines and propellers are now okay. They've been gone over with a fine tooth comb and are all set to get in Hitler's hair. <laughs>